Hi everyone and welcome along. I'm still enjoying the sunshine in our garden and today I'm going to paint some cornflower. So grab your paints and let's get started. I was allowed to pick one so I have got my one uh, cornflower. Okay so we're going to do again a slightly expressive painting a bit like the one we did uh, in the last session with the poppies and I'm going to layer up some cornflower um, and do some nice sort of translucent versions first, let them dry and then paint some more on top because the cornflower grow in lovely clusters and you always see many sort of piled on top of each other and I just think that's a really nice way to do it. So I'm just mixing up some sap green and some green gold to make my stems but we're going to be painting them really nice and translucent to begin with. I've got my rigger brush which is fantastic for long slender stems so we're going to have that and in terms of the petal colours I've got some cobalt blue deep just up here, I've got some permanent rose as well and I've also got some cobalt violet down here. Now cobalt violet is a colour that I usually don't end up using that much when I'm looking for a purple because I love to mix my own versions from the blues and pink tones but it will be a rather useful tone I'm sure when we're trying to create all the different coloured cornflower flowers because cornflower blue is the famous one but I'm sure you can see from ants uh, flowers in the pot there are many other colours on display there. So I'm going to begin by painting some translucent stems. So they're long and slender and using the rigger brush they really are going to be very, very slender to the point where we probably don't need the rigger brush much more beyond just doing that first bit and we've just got a little, little blob of water so I'll just extend it up. So I'm going to be using the size 2 brush for quite a lot of the rest of this. So I'm really painting very, very dilute colours. Putting those leaves in and then we could just drop in a tiny bit of the green colour but I have to keep reminding myself that I am painting translucently for a reason. Now there's a little sort of bulbous shape just underneath the flower and then I really don't want too much colour and I really want to get a, a lovely sense of the blend. What I'm going to do is taper the brush out to get those beautiful petals but I want it all nice and dilute and blended into one another so it's barely any colour at all. It's such a treat to have the real thing in front of me as well. So those petals sort of around the front and back those are just going to be a little bit more squashed than the ones out to the side. So that is what I'm aiming for. I'm going to paint in a few more and then we are going to paint over the top with some more concentrated flowers. So to repeat that flower again with some very dilute permanent rose. So as I said, the, those petals that are just coming round the middle just want to be a bit squatter than the ones off to the side. If you haven't had a look at my watercolour quick fix playlist, then you really should because we've just recently done a tutorial all about how to get your flowers angled and get the petals anchored in the right way. Now that our dilute flowers have dried completely, we can paint in a more concentrated layer over the top. So 
I'm going to get more of the sap green, more of the green gold and a little less of the water and I'm going to place in my stem so I need to think where am I, where do I want my flowers to go. Well I think we'll pop one, oh, it's a challenge isn't it? Compositions, right I think we'll go one in here and I, I don't want to be scared of going over the top of the flowers behind because that's the whole point. So I'm just using a small uh, 3 tenths brush just because I'm sort of sketching out these lines a little bit more, uh, less kind of loose and free. There we go. And then we'll have another stem. something coming off here as well. Okay, that's how I'm going to begin because of course the flowers can also grow off some of the branches. So I'm going to be just a little bit more detailed with my painting this time. So we've got the, the bulbous shape underneath, so a bit of green gold going to paint that in. And now a blue, cobalt blue deep set of petals that I'm, I've sort of gone in with a stronger colour but I'm now very much using the colour with the water I've got, so I'm not going to be using too much colour. When I paint flowers, I'm always keen to try and capture the essence of how it grows. And the thing that really struck me when I was looking at Ant's lovely pot of cornflower was just how they're all clustered together and shaking about in the sun and the wind and it felt like you couldn't just paint one on its own they needed to be and they felt like a little family really so i'm just sort of putting a little bit of that blue color into the uh, bulb underneath and also when we look closely at the sort of underneath of the cornflower you can see there are tiny little purpley little fronds so I'll put in one or two of those and then just dab again a little bit in the base and you do get little flecks just coming out there, so just a few dabs of the brush. Lovely. So yeah, that's the sort of level of detail that I'm now going to paint in my flowers. Let's get another one in. So using the green gold, and if you don't have green gold, you can mix up some sap green with some lemon yellow that does a really nice job so here i've got my cobalt violet and we're going to paint in some more concentrated petals the the real sort of cornflower petal is a sort of six or seven pronged trumpet but painting in this controlled loose style, it's very challenging to really 
capture every single element of the trumpet. So I'm just imitating the sort of soft points of each petal and creating the general shape. And if I go at a sort of fairly slow and steady pace, it also means that on this very hot day, things are slowly drying. And I'm just placing in a bit of this sort of plummy purple color again. And a few dashes underneath. Okay, I'm gonna put in the rest of my cornflowers. We can now add in the leaves and maybe a few buds here and there. It's amazing how even painting in a very loose style, you can see there's so much sort of contrast between those in the foreground and the background and it's lovely because it just is another way of painting a composition just by using layering and um, if you haven't had a look at the quick fixes I'm like a like a stuck record these days with the quick fixes but they are really fantastic and they're just five minute videos to take you through really uh, specific techniques when it comes to watercolour and layering is a recent one we've looked at. So I'll just turn the page a little bit. It's a recent one we've looked at and we just do five minutes looking at some of the golden rules of layering. And then you will be good to go. You'll know everything you need to know. It's the beauty of watercolor. There's not a huge amount to it once you've got the basics. I'm going to drop in some of that sort of plummy purple colour. So this composition is looking really lovely and you can see sort of from the layering you've got uh, a lovely feel of a cluster of cornflower but it's actually not sort of too busy but it's got a lovely energy to it. So we're going to leave it at that and I really hope you have a go. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on with your painting. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time. Bye.